Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here and welcome to this week's magic video. Today we're going to be doing something that's a bit different than what we typically do in our Friday Night Magics. I've had questions about mana bases in the past and recently had a request to do a video explaining how to properly build a mana base, so that's what we're going to do. The method that I use and that most pros and semi-pros with a basic understanding of math subscribe to as well is called hypergeometric distribution. Now I know that's a big scary multisyllabic phrase, but don't freak out on me, it's a much simpler thing than the phrase would imply. And the existence of hypergeometric calculators online really simplifies the whole process. You can use any of them that you want. One such site is geneprof.org, and that's the one that we are going to be using today. I will have a link in the description if you'd like to make use of it yourself. The first thing we need to decide is how many lands we are going to be running. I'm not going to go too in-depth into that. It is, however, fairly well-established knowledge if you follow high-level magic play, such as Pro Tours and Grand Prix that an aggro deck will want between 20 and 24 lands depending on curve and other factors. A mid-range deck will want 24 to 26, again depending on those same factors. And a control deck generally will want 26 plus mana sources. There are, as I said, other factors that can affect this, such as accelerants like creature or artifact mana sources, cheap card draw or card selection, exceptionally low or high mana curves, and spells that fetch lands out of your deck. But we won't be worrying about those, as it's easy to get too bogged down in particulars, and what we want to establish is a basic understanding. Next, let's explore just what a hypergeometric calculator is, and how it is useful in mana base construction. Here is the calculator that we are going to be using. So, what is hypergeometric probability. Simply put, it is the chance of getting a certain result from a certain population, in this case, the chance of drawing a land from a magic deck. So, if our population size is 60, which is the total number of cards in the deck, and our total number of lands is 24, which is the number of successes in the population, then our chances of drawing an opening 7 card hand, 7 being the sample size here, with at least two lands in it, two being the number of successes, is 85.7%. This includes hands that have more than two lands as well. The probability of drawing exactly two lands is shown here, and is 26.9%. And if we want to see what our given chance of hitting a certain number of land drops by a certain turn is, we just adjust accordingly. Say we want to see how likely we are to hit three lands by turn three. Well, we up the sample size by cards drawn to nine. We don't use ten here because we want to calculate our odds on the play, and we don't get to draw a card on our first turn in this case and up the successes to 3, which shows us a 78.8% probability of hitting 3 or more lands by turn 3, and a 26.6% chance of exactly 3. There are, of course, other factors that we are not considering, such as mulligans, but again, that is getting into more complicated specifics and is just frankly beyond the scope of this video. However, if you are interested in these more complex calculations, then I will put a link in the description to an article by Magic Hall of Famer Frank Karsten that gets into the real nitty-gritty details of such things. Now, it's also important when building and testing decks to not be frustrated if you are getting mana screwed or mana flooded or not hitting the exact color distribution you need despite the math being in your favor. This is results-based thinking and we want to always be trusting the math, not the results. In a game with random elements, like Magic the Gathering, randomness will sometimes get the better of you. What we are trying to do is mathematically reduce the impact randomness has as much as possible. Now that we have established a basic understanding of how this calculator works, let's see how we apply that to numbers of colored sources. Let's say, for example, we are playing Gifted Aetherborn and or Grasp of Darkness and really want to hit two black mana on turn two. 
how many black mana sources do we need to get an acceptable percent chance to do this? First off, what is an acceptable percent chance for this? In most instances, I myself accept 80 as my baseline for what I would like to achieve. If we plug in the correct numbers, we see that 19 black sources gives us a 79.5% chance and 20 sources gives us an 82.4% chance. So, do we go with 19 or 20? Well, that comes down to a few other factors. Can we hit 20 sources without hurting our other color requirements? If 19 is what we need to go with to hit our goals for any other colors in the deck, I think it's acceptable to run the 19. Here's another example. Say we are running Tireless Tracker and want to maximize our chances of hitting one green source by turn three. How many sources do we need? Well, to break the 80% mark, we will need 10. To break the 90% mark, we will need 13. So, in a deck that needs to hit two black by turn two, and one green by turn three, we would need a mana base that has at least 19 black sources and 10 green sources. And in the case of a two color mana base, we can often be significantly above our numbers thanks to dual lands and mana fixing such as evolving wilds which count as both colors of mana. The more colors you add, the more difficult it becomes to balance of course but hopefully this will give you the tools you need to build mana bases that are more consistently able to hit the numbers of and colors of mana you need to hit a higher percentage of the time. And that's it. It's as simple as that. There will be links in the description for everything I've mentioned here today, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like below. It really does help tremendously. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.